Okay. Okay. Good morning, okay. everyone. Um, talk about hot plates on Shabbos. Now, there are two types of hot plates. The hot plates have a thermostat, and the hot plates that do not have a thermostat. The ones that have a thermostat, when you put something on the, if you, if you, even if you have something on there before Shabbos, um, but when you take off the pot, the thermostat will, it'll cool off and the heat will go higher. So then you're actually doing something, even though it's, uh, uh, you don't need it to get hot. But the um, since it's if if it goes hot right away, it would be us uh, because you're causing the fire to go uh, to go on, the heat to go on. Or if it's on already, you may be causing it to um, stay on longer. If it doesn't have a thermostat, then we get into the so there's a, a steady heat. So we're not worried about your making the hot plate go on or go off. Now we're only concerned about the halachas of Bishal, the halachas of Shia, Chazara, and other things like that. So the um, so if you if it if it has no controls, so there's no thermostat, it's on all the time. You, you plug it in before Shabbos, it's on. Um, now the new Shahia, you're not allowed to leave a pot on the fire. If it's my stomach, the Yafaloi, if it, it tastes better if it's cooked more, like a chon, it usually tastes better if it's cooked longer. And then, so so that's that's a problem. But the, the reason why the Chachamim Asad Shahia is because Kzeir Shamiyachat Begacholim. We're afraid that maybe you will stoke up the fire to make it bigger. But over here, you cannot make it bigger because it doesn't have no controls. You just plug it in, it's, it's either on or off. So then the, the, the Issa of Shahia would not apply. Now, Chazara is because it's Mexic Mavashal. Well, if you don't intend to make any chazar on it, that sh shouldn't be a problem. But uh, uh, chazara, and so if you take it off, um, you, the, if, if it's group of ketuma, <coughs> then as long as you uh, you, you had dust to put it back on again, and so to be yadai, um, you still keep it in your hand, you don't put it down anywhere, it will be permitted to, uh, permitted to put it back. But it's not so pasha that you'd be allowed, even though the Gemara says by Gruf of Ketuma it would be muta, because not the derech to melvashel on a Gruf of Ketuma, but over here it has a heat, and uh, it's not so pasha that you should be muta to make hazara, even though that she would, wouldn't be a problem. Now, see, if we have an urn, the old urns that they used to make in the United States, that the hot water urns that they had two heats. They had an initial heat, which was a strong heat that boiled up the water. Once it boiled or got to uh, 200 degrees or whatever it was set for, um, it went to a lower heat. That lower heat sta stayed on the whole Shabbos. And unless there was some extenuating uh, circumstances, which you were not mechuit v'chosh before, that the heat did not go higher or lower the lower heat stayed on the whole Shabbos, and there was no problem of the fact that it is, there's no blech over here, because there was nothing to do, there were no controls, everything went automatic, and um, once it went on the lower heat, it stayed on the whole the lower heat, the whole Shabbos. Now that today, they have different types of urns, and some of them, they have a thermostat in them, and when the when the water gets to a lower degree, it re um, it goes. It only has one heat, and that heat it heats it up to um, let's say two hundred degrees, and then when it goes down to one hundred and eighty, it's the same heat goes on until it's two hundred degrees, and it keeps on 
being chayzer chalila the whole the whole Shabbos, whether you use it or you don't use it. But if you do use it, you're introducing the room air into the container because it can't come out any water unless the there's air to replace it. So if you're putting in seventy degree air, it's going to cool it off, and therefore it's going to go back faster on. And so you're causing it to go on earlier, and that you should not use on Shabbos. Now, there was um, there's such a thing which um, someone had invented a Kedera Blech. Uh, the reason why it's called the Kedera Blech is not because Mr. Kedera was the one who invented it, but because it says in the Shulchan Arach that a, um, if you have a Kedera which is on top of the, on, on the fire, um, either because he didn't need a Blech because his stomach was alloy, or because uh, you had a Blech and you have a pot on it with food in it, so you're allowed to make chazara. Uh, you're allowed to take food out of the refrigerator and put it on top of this kedera blech if it was cooked already before and it was a solid as opposed to a liquid where we say ein bishlach It was cooked already ein bishlach even though we can't put it onto the blech itself because some people cook on a blech but the... Um, but on top of the Kadero, there's something cooking in it. Uh, so that was not a Mexican of It's not the Derek of that way, and it will be permitted. So someone invented this Kadero Blech. It's like a, um, a long pan, and uh, you put water in it. And then there's another pan overturned in it. And over here, since it's on top of uh, water which is cooking, um, it is. Uh, it will be permitted based on the aloha of putting al gabi kadera, and that's where it got the name kadera back from. Now, Lafiani is dati that it's not so simple. You could rely on that because um, uh, cooking on top of water is actually something which is done to make sure that it doesn't burn. Uh, this way, it can't burn because it's on top of water. Water cannot get to in general, to more than 212 degrees at um, at uh, sea level, and so it'll never burn. Um, so therefore, I don't know if you can say that that's shleikaderach, shleikaderach bishul. However, I do think that if you are going to drink the water, then it's considered, so it's on top of something you want to eat, and then there's something to consider. Um, but see, if you're not going to drink the water, and this is just a way of cooking it, I don't think that uh, it is so kosher. Um, so there was some uh, uh, tumul about the yant of mode ovens, which the uh, Star K had put out with my haskama, and. Um, I want to speak a little bit about it. The, how we got involved with these ovens was because they, in the initial ovens which needed a Yantav mode was that they started putting out ovens with a 12-hour automatic shutoff. And the reason they did that is for safety purposes, because someone um, put on his oven and forgot that he put on the oven, and then he, he, he left to, to go to Eretz Yisrael. And when all of a sudden, when he's on the plane, he realized that he forgot to turn off the oven. Don't worry about it. In 12 hours, it'll, it'll go off automatically. So that was like a safety feature. A person forgets and goes away so that he can, that it won't cause a fire. Now, uh, so that was one problem because people who had the chomp used to put in the ovens and uh, to cook or bake overnight. And when they kick in the morning, when they wanted to eat it, so it was cold. Because even in the, in the summer, where you can put it in 
before Shabbos, so maybe at 8.30 or something like that, 8.30 p.m., and you want to eat it at 12 o'clock the next morning, um, so then the oven already turned off uh, four hours before, and uh, it was not. So that was one problem. That was the main problem why they called the Star K. I'm not sure why they picked the Star K over any other place, but they called us. Um, and that was one of their problems. The other problem was that the, when you open up the door, the oven light went on. When you close the door, the oven light went off. So even though in the refrigerator you just screw the bulb loose and you didn't have any problem, it was not so easy to screw the bulb loose in a oven because the oven, the bulb had to be protected from the heat of the oven and it was um, screw, it, it had a cover that was screwed in, it was not easy to get out. I mean, like there were like little screws that would screw the cover in <coughs> with a, <coughs> with a um, gasket that had to be fitted properly. It wasn't simple. So it was not for a regular person to be able to screw out the bulb, especially since they wanted it on during the week. So that was another problem. Third problem was there was a display on the back, uh, on the back, um, um, uh, towards, uh, on the back of the oven that said you, told you exactly how many degrees the oven was. As soon as you opened the oven, the display changed. When you closed it, it changed again. <clears throat> so that was uh, something which we not permitted on Shabbos. And fourthly, on the time bake, when you put on time bake, you don't want the oven on the whole Shabbos, especially in the summer. So you put the oven on and it, uh, let's say you wanted something for at night. So you put it on and at 10 o'clock it automatically went off. Now when it off, when it went off, there was a uh, alarm that rang to let you know that the oven is off. So if you didn't take out the oven, the alarm would stay on. You didn't take it out. And um, it just kept on going on and on and on until you uh, shut it off. So it was a big, <coughs> these things are big problems. They called us, <coughs> we um, got involved with the um, technicians and they were able to figure out how to get rid of all these problems. The 12 hour shut off, we changed to a, 30, a 72 hour shut off. I don't know if it, uh, because even if it's, it's uh, Shabbos and two days yonta, or two days yonta and the Shabbos, it would never be more needed for more than 72 hours. Now, I'm not sure exactly how helpful that was if the house really burned down after 48 hours, you would shut off after 72 hours. I don't know if it helped too much. But um, they were willing to do this. And if you put it into the Sabbath mode, you know, normally you go, after go off after 12 hours, you put it in the Sabbath mode, so you adopt that an option. I mean, it's your choice. And <clears throat> they wouldn't get sued, which was the main thing they were worried about. So it went off after 72 hours. The oven light is like this. If you put it into the Sabbath mode when the door was open, the light would stay on the whole Shabbos. If you put it into the oven, into the Shabbos mode when the door was closed, it would stay off the whole Shabbos. You know, it's open, but opening up the oven would not affect it. So as the display went, it just said Sabbath mode and uh, from before Shabbos, when you put it in Sabbath mode and it did not, uh, nothing else came up on that display. And um, as far as the time bake went, we shut off the alarm um, for the, when it came to the time. And so therefore, there were, there were, these things were not a problem. Now, there was one thing that, and you had to put it into the Sabbath mode if you wanted it to work on a Shabbos. Now, there was something else that I did for Yontif. And what I, what I did over there was that I made it possible to change the heat on Yontif. And I'll explain what the heta was based on. Um, to, ch to change the temperature on, on Yantav. So in the Shulchan Aruch, uh, says that if there's a fire and you take 
um, containers uh, made out of uh, cardboard or made out of uh, it's talking about earthenware in the Shulchan Aruch. You fill them with water. And when the fire gets to the earthenware containers, it's going to crack the earthenware uh, containers. The water will flow out and put out the fire. It's mutter, because it's only a grama. The Torah says, Lesasa komalacha, asi Yehuda asa, ha grama mutter. So the Mi'alacha says that this is not only true about kibli, which is one of the malachas, but it is true about all the malachas. There is a salsa kamalacha and all malachas. <coughs> so if you do it through a grama, it is muta. The Rama adds something and he says that it's only muta of makam pseida. It's only if there's a hefsid, like the house burns down, that's a makam pseida. But if uh, I mean, it has to be a nikadig of pseida, not, not talking about uh, a dollar or two. <coughs> so. Uh, therefore, the, uh, even though the Taz uh, disagrees with the Ramah and he says that this sheet that has been Rokham Seder is uh, Rabbeinu Yael brought down in the Madchai and no one else agrees with him, but the Ramah passes that way and that's how we go. This is only Mutam Rokham Seder. Now, Rishlam Zaman says that this Rokham Seder is also a heta. Um, where it's not a hefsa that you can lose, that necessarily you can lose money, but let's say someone's a chayla and can't, and can't walk unless he's in a wheelchair. So if he's, if he's stuck in, in the house and can't do anything, can't go to shul. Um, so if we, if for them, it's also, it's considered like makam seda. It means there's a, 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 an important reason why it should be done is considered like a Mokham Seder. Now, Rabbi Shalom Zalman said if someone's sick and he can't go without it, so then uh, Grom is Mota. So th that's where the Heta comes for elevators, that uh, the Shabbos elevators that stop at every floor, whether someone goes in it or no one goes in it, so there are people that say that when you go in, you may be causing, you're causing the, the more electricity to work and you make more electricity. But what you're doing is only a uh, grama, you go in and you just go in it and therefore for Chayla is allowed to use such a kind of elevator. Of course, there's other issues with elevator that um, now then when you go in and when you're halfway in, especially if uh, someone is in a wheelchair, it might take some time to get in, <coughs> that um, the door, which normally would close, let's say stays open for 10 seconds, and it, it takes you, you first went, went in after it opened five seconds, and uh, when the door is supposed to close, um, there's an electric eye, and you're in the, in the and you are stopping the, the light ray from going across, and therefore the door, if started to close, will open. So there's, that's another consideration, things like that. I'm not getting into that right now. You can make a buzzer to go on automatically um, two seconds before the door is supposed to close or whatever. There are ways of dealing with that. But the, um, the heta was, because it's a grama for chayla's mutter, but if a regular person shouldn't use it if there are other issues involved. Otherwise, in my personal opinion, based on what Roshul Zalman says, is electricity, making electricity is not really an issue because there's no, it's, which malach is it? It's not shechita, and it's not, not ksiva, and it's not ketsira. So which malach is it exactly that if you make more electricity, that it's also. As a matter of fact, when you walk on a carpet, um, you are usually, um, you're usually making electricity, <coughs> static electricity, and no one seems to have a problem with that. I asked Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Zayel Salah Bracha, whether you're allowed to take your sweater off um, on Shabbos. So he asked me, well, why, what would be the shower taking off a sweater? I said, well, you take it off. It very often makes sparks, and which is a discharge of electricity. 
Um, he had no problem with it. He said it, it, it's not a problem. Um, now, the um, so o over here on here we're dealing with a grammar that it, it depends. We could make it work with a grammar. That means when you set it to a certain temperature, it doesn't go on right away, but it goes on later. But a grama is really only with the Mokham Seder. And here you talk about an oven, what kind of Seder is it? So you won't have Chalms on Shabbos or, you, or on, on Yantav. You won't, uh, you know, the world's not going to come to an end. So it's not considered Mokham Seder for sure not. The, but Rav Shlomo Zalman says, on the head of the refrigerators, he says you're allowed to open the door of the refrigerator, be, even though that by opening the door, you're intro, there's cool air in the refrigerator. By opening up the door, you bring in room temperature, which is warmer, and now you're causing the refrigerator to go on earlier. But he says that he goes into great detail about the thermostat, that it's only a grammar, and he holds that even though the Ramah is machme, it's only mutter mocham seda, it's only mocham seda if the malacha which is going to happen through this grama is a malacha derisa. But if it's a malacha drabana, he says for sure the Ramah did not answer it. And he says that the whole electric power is on the drabana. The only thing which is derisa is electric heat and light. That that is derisa, and that you can't even do through a grama unless it's mokum seder. And the uh, so we open the refrigerator, which is a grama of a drabanan, because electric power, uh, the power to the motor. So he says that that's that's mutter. It seems that most of the world is being samach on this hatha. Of course, today is a little bit more complex because today we have other showers with open the refrigerator. Um, maybe I should get into a little bit. Today, the question is that refrigerators have heaters in them. Now, why would you want to put a heater in a refrigerator? A refrigerator is um, meant to cool off, not to make heat. But the reason why there's heaters, and may oil on the refrigerators had heaters in them, is because the cooling coils, which there are, which cause the, the, the air in the refrigerator to get uh, cool, after a while, the, in the, the water in the atmosphere is going to condense on those coils. Same way if you have a bar or something made out of glass, uh, let's say if you have um, orange juice or milk in a glass container, when you take it out, it gets wet on the outside because it's cold and the, the um, water vapor in the air condenses on something which is colder. So the, since these pipes are cold, the water vapor inside the air and refrigerator is going to condense on it and becomes ice. And once it becomes ice, the ice is like an insulator and will not let the cold out of the pipe to cool off the air. So the only way to do it is to put heaters in it the heaters will melt off the ice. So the why wasn't the Shiloh before, and now all of a sudden it became a Shiloh? Because it used to be that the, let's, I'm not sure about these numbers, but the, you'll understand the, what I'm trying to bring out. There was a certain formula, let's say every hour, the heaters went on for five minutes. So when you open the refrigerator, you didn't open the refrigerator, it was, it, it went on, it, it used to go five minutes heat, an hour cooling. So there was no shiloh. You opening the refrigerator did not cause it to heat and did not cause it to, to stop heating. It went automatically um, uh, all the time. The only, only thing that to open the refrigerator did effect was that it, the motor had to go on for longer because it's, um, it, there was, it was warmer inside if you opened it than if you didn't open it. Then there came the time when the government, I think, made a law that you, on an appliance, you have to write how much electricity is going to use in a year. 
So the big sign's a yellow sign, the bike riding on it. This refrigerator, uh, under normal use, would um, use a hundred and sixty-nine uh, hundred sixty-nine dollars and fifty cents of electricity. Now, at this point, if there was one that would use one hundred sixty-nine dollars of electricity a year, and the other refrigerator would use one hundred sixty-eight dollars of electricity a year, everyone would buy the one for one hundred sixty-eight. They would pay five hundred dollars more. To use the one hundred and sixty-eight, even though that is doubtful that they would ever make up the difference in the money, didn't matter. So now they had to find ways how to use less electricity. So the thinking was that the only time that you have to, um, it's not the same overnight when most people don't open the refrigerator. So then you don't need it five minutes every hour. It's good enough if it will be five minutes every two hours, because since they don't open the refrigerator, so the the um, water vapor in the air is already changed into water and ice, and it, as it gets less, so then there's, there's less heat needed. So now, so what do they do? So they made it that it depends on how many times you open the refrigerator. So if you open the refrigerator um, uh, uh, twice in an hour, so then it's going to go uh, five minutes in an hour. If it's the opener, if you don't open up, so then it'll go ten minutes in an hour. It'll go I mean, less. It'll go three minutes in an hour, whatever it is. So you are actually affecting, even though it's with Brahma, you're affecting the, how much the heat goes on. So now we're going to a big problem. What, this heat is an Issa Derisa or is an Issa Drabanan? If it's an Issa Derisa, so if, then Grama doesn't help, only Mokham Seda. There is no Mokham Seda over here. Um, if it's an Issa Derisa, so, the, so there will be also. If it's an Issa Drabanan, the same head of the refrigerator will be on the seat too. So I asked the, the refrigerator company to send me the heating uh, coil, the coils which they have. So they sent it to me and I, and I plugged it in and to see if it gets, if it changes color. Because Havara, fire, is something which is both hot and it is, it has light. But if you are just making a hot in itself is not considered Havara, you can take a spoon and put it into the tea even though the, the water is much more than Yatsa lettuce bowl, and it was even boiling, and there's no Issa of Havara over here, but just making it hot. And if it's just light, which I believe is the heta that Moshe Feinstein had to take off a sweater, even though it gives light, but the light has no heat, so no tangible heat. So therefore, it would be also muta. So I wanted to, it gives off heat for sure, because that's what's necessary. The question was, does it give off light? So I plugged it in, and um, it uh, was no light. Baruch Hashem, no problems. Then I thought, maybe there's no light, because it was light, so you don't notice it so well. So I went to a dark room and plugged it in over there. It was bright, bright light. You could see it very, very clearly. So it was, it does give light. So it was Nisa Derisa, and by Nisa Derisa, Rav Shlomo Zalman says you can't be Samach on, I mean, the Ramah says uh, that you can't be Samach on Groma unless it's Magma Hefzit. So it made it a new problem. So we um, made a, uh, we made a, um, a Sabbath mode refrigerator that when you put it in the, in the, in the Sabbath mode, it goes back to the old system. That is, a, it's a set amount of time that the heat goes on or the, every hour, whether you open it or you don't open it. And so that's how we resolve that problem. It was not easy to do. It's a dual system in the same, in the same refrigerator, Baruch Hashem, the Baruch Hashem helped, and we were able to work it out. Now, getting back to the oven. So what, what I did was that I was Saimach on what it says in the Mishnah Barura, actually in the Sharetzian, 
that even though the grama is only muta v'makam hefsid, but on that's on Shabbos, but on Yantuf, the um, uh, grama is muta. So you don't need makam hefsid. Tosa says that in the cells beya and. Uh, he brings a Mara Marcha and says that on Yantav is Mata. Okay, so that makes everything a little bit easier. So on Yantav, I said that if you can put it onto a higher setting or a lower setting with a Groma, that means it was a delayed reaction, that it didn't go on until 10, ten seconds or whatever seconds later, that uh, after you set it um, on Yantav, um, you had to put it in the Sabbath mode. The Sabbath mode, you had to put it anyway. But you had this option that you could, um, now it, was, it wasn't so clear exactly what the temperature would be because you had to get a little bit of guesswork, but you could higher it and you could lower it, and it was mut on yat. Now, some people had a tina. How does this oven know that in 10 seconds it's supposed to go high or supposed to go low? How does he know that? It must be that something you're doing causes a reaction that will put it, that will, it's like you, you set a time clock that you should, something should go on, on Shabbos, that something should go on in 10 minutes. So then you are doing something now. It's not a, a grammar. That was the time. So I said like this, this was my kavana. Um, in the Torah, we find that you're allowed to eat, uh, you're allowed to eat cheese. Cheese is, uh, how can you eat cheese? It's full of microorganisms. The bacteria that change the milk into cheese, you're eating hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of bacteria without shrita. Um, they don't, um, I don't know, uh, what's the hatta? answer is you can't see them. And the Torah did not answer anything that you, can, that you cannot perceive with your five senses that the Rav Shalom gave us. We're touching it, you can't feel it, and you can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't taste it. Um, so they, if you can't do that, the Rav Shalom is not trying to trick us. So the bunch of, it's not us. It's automatically not us if there's no way you can tell that it's happening. So when you when you put it into the, the change the the and because of that, um, if you have two letters in a safer Torah, which look like they're touching, but if you take a magnifying glass, you'll see they're not touching. It is possible. If it doesn't look like it's touching, and uh, with a magnifying glass, you, you see that it is touching, it's kosher. We go by what we can perceive with the kochas that the Banshom gave us. In a kodesh baruch hu bavetrun in briyos, the Banshom didn't expect every year to walk around with a magnifying glass. What happens before they had magnifying glasses, so then they did that. And that's a, it's a klal gadol batayra. So therefore, what you're doing at the time, there's no sound, there's nothing that you, can, that you can hear, nothing you can see, there's nothing you can perceive that anything is happening. So that's not considered a mice. So then the, there were other people saying, if so, are you allowed to, on Shabbos, are you allowed to record, make a recording of someone's uh, drusha? because you can't perceive anything. So no, actually over there, even if you couldn't perceive anything, but if you make a, a record, uh, whether it's um, a CD, or CD, um, or something like that, that you'll make, that's considered take a money, you're making something. That's this the rice, and there it doesn't even help. Um, but over there, sometimes you can see something, you can hear something. But if you can't see or, uh, or hear anything, it is not. And because of that, it seems to me that you're allowed to have a security system on, on Shabbos to see who comes into the building, who doesn't come into the building, let's say in a shul or in the yeshiva, 
as long as the monitor is not on. If the monitor is not on, you can't see anything, can't hear anything, nothing seems to, um, and we're talking the case we don't put on the camera. The camera's on all the time, because if you put on the camera, you can actually hear something when the camera um, goes into place. But if the camera's on all the time, and you're allowed to have it, even though that it goes into the memory of the computer, because nothing, because nothing's happened, because because you don't see anything is happening, and you can recall it after after shabbos. It's not considered tikkun mana because it's not something which stays that you can use like a tape or a CD. Um, now, of course, there was uh, so that was the heta for the ovens. Now, there seems there was someone who was upset with his hat of the ovens, and he got a call Kaira from Eretz Yisrael, many, um, many Gedolim who signed on to it, and um, even though that evidently some of them um, were not explained exactly what it was, because some said there's Mamish Chol Shabbos Deraisa, and some said, well, I was never Mata on Shabbos, only Mata on Yantav. And um, it had been going on for 10 years already, and no one said anything. All of a sudden, someone found out about it. And the Nissan um, Karelitz, well, Yashua was signed on it. And Rav Nissan Karelitz, he was the only one who said, I saw his chuva on it, and there's nothing over here to rely on. OK. So when people called me up and say, can they use this? I said, look, I think it's mutter, but you have to go after the Gada of Israel, and you should not use it. Then when I was in Israel, about three quarters of a, of a year later, I went to Anderson Corrales and I asked him, what was your problem with my tshuva? He said, what tshuva? I said, the tshuva about the ovens. He didn't remember anything about it. So he asked his Besden, because he does everything together with his Besden. He asked him, um, he asked him, do they, do they remember anything about it? didn't remember anything about it. So I said, okay, I'll ask you now. Told him the whole thing, how it works. So he says, you know, that in May Barak, we are not, uh, we don't, we're not so much on the heta of Groma. Some rabbi who are samachana, but we're not samachana in Bnei Brak. I said in Bnei Brak, you're not samachana on Grama. So how do you walk in your house in the winter when uh, when the heat goes on? Or how do you? I didn't realize in Bnei Brak could be they don't have no heat in the house in the winter. Don't get that cold. I said, how do you go into your house in the summer when the air condition goes on? You're being garum that the heat should go on more, and the uh, and the air conditioning should be going on longer. He said, we leave a window open. So it's not a psychratia. So anyway, the hot air comes in, in the winter, the cold air, the, the hot air comes in in the summer, the cold air comes in, in the winter. So it's not a psychratia that it's going to do anything. OK, so um, I took a survey about people in the neighborhood, and they didn't know anything about leaving a window open. It doesn't matter. That's what he helped. So, so I said, well, what happens to people who are able to open the refrigerator on Shabbos? They can't open the refrigerator on Shabbos either because it's based on a grammar. He said, if, it's, if there's someone on that, there's, so then it's mutter. That's what he said. Baruch Hashem, I had a, a, someone else there with me at the time, so I'm not the only one saying it. Who knows about it? That someone else was there. So then, further with the story, I went to... I, had to, I went to Yishlai and wanted to speak to Rabbi Yashiv. Now, I've spoken to Rabbi Yashiv in the past various times, and um, I had a hard time getting an appointment to speak to him. So, uh, with a lot of pressure, I was able to get an appointment on the condition that I do not speak to him about ovens. And uh, not only that, but they want me to make a list beforehand of all the things I want to speak to him about to make sure there's nothing there about ovens. Yeah, I mean, it sounded crazy. I came to Rabbi Yashiv, I said, no problem, but I didn't even, I didn't, 
after that meeting where Nisan and Karel, I already got the impression that there's something not 100% over here that's going on. It was not explained to them properly, especially some people say it's Chol Shabbos Raisa, so that um, I knew that there was something in the very beginning. Anyway, so now I was really uh, um, astounded, or Rabbi Yasser has a problem to tell me that it's, uh, that it's also that you can't do it. It didn't make any sense. Okay, so I made a list of what I want to speak about. I came in, I gave them a list, and they said to me, the rabbi said to me, you can't say that you can't speak of Yashavir. All you can do is go and get a bracha. I said, but Chaim Kamyeski, who I also spoken to about various things, um, said, I have to ask uh, the Shver. I have to ask the Rabbi Yashavir. Okay, then you can go in. Okay, then you can speak. So, so I asked them my questions. I had to do. I didn't uh, mention anything about ovens. And Baruch Hashem, I went to uh, Baruch Then, after that, we had a uh, about a couple of years later, we had a problem with the water meters in Baltimore. And uh, it's not only in Baltimore, but we had the problem in Baltimore that they wanted to change the meters from a mechanical meter that, as the water th uh, w flowed through the meter. It, turned the wheel to measure how many gallons you're using so they should know how much to charge you to a digital um, system. And the digital system uh, was much better for them because this way they had to have a person to go and read the meters and if he was good, he could read 200 meters a day. But this way with a digital system, you just, um, it, it sends a message to the main office and says how much was used. So actually, this is like writing on Shabbos because you write these letters of the, the numbers. So we spoke to the, um, the city and we asked them, do you have to have these numbers on the meter? Because so even without the numbers on the meter, um, it, it goes to your main system. Now, the main system, it's not as if there's maybe three million people in the greater Baltimore area. It's not as if there are three million monitors over there and someone's watching all the monitors. If they want, if they have a quest about something, someone complained about it, his meter, his bill, so then they press uh, the number and then it comes up on their monitor. So you're not really writing, if it's only on your on meter that you're writing. They said, no, they need it in case there's a problem that they can check if the meter is correct or not correct. They need it. So. I made a, a made, I made a system like this for them. The, the meter should have a, a a flap on top. When the flap is down, the the it automatically goes down unless you open it. It's on a spring. And when it's down, there is no readout on the meter. If they want to read out the meter, they have to open the flap, and then the the it will come up. So they said, well, when it's down, you can't see it either. Anyway, so what difference is there? If it's there? So what difference if there's a, if the digital display under it, if you can't see it? No, I said, no, it's there, you, you can't do it. They, so we worked it out, and that's what they did. I said, is it going to cost you more money? They said, no, we, oh, oh, we have a hundred, or we have um, a half a million meters that we order from them. This is like a, just a design thing, and uh, it'll, it won't cost them any, it will make no difference whatsoever. Then they asked uh, us if they only wanted on, on the residences, also for the businesses, commercial um, uh, meters, if they also, we want this. So we thought commercial meters, I don't have the store open on Chabas, so are we going to worry about him, that he should be able to? So I asked them, what is a, a shoe, is that commercial or is that residential? They said it's commercial. I said, yes, we wanted it on that. So another half a meter is that they changed it also. But anyway, so, but there was still a question. But even though there was no writing that you were doing at the time, but you were sending a message to the computer, the main computer, of how much it was. So even though that I held that it was not 
um, that it was the same heta. You can, there's nothing to see. You didn't, there was no monitor that was on at the time. Um, so it wouldn't be a problem, but I didn't want to take that cry as the whole city. Uh, um, so I went and asked Rav Chaim Kanievsky. He said, um, I don't see any shy one. So I said, uh, he said, it's just like when one person talks to another person, he's sending him a message. And that you're allowed to talk to each other, so sending a message is no problem. I said, but this is an uh, is talking, and here's an electronic message. He said, it was only Kinshaya. I don't see any problem. So this is all in line with what we're talking about. No, you can't see anything. It's uh, nothing's happening, and um, that you can perceive, and therefore it should um, it should be Muslim. Now I did ask Rabbi Yashiv on a different occasion. That, that what happens if someone has a has a um, a security system where it does come up on a monitor, like someone is in a big um, apartment building, so you have that, or um, to commercial places they have someone watching it all the time, the front door where they come in to make sure that there's no one over there who looks, looks suspicious, or who is suspicious. So the Rabbi Joshua asked me, if you would stand in front of this um, camera the whole day, would the would your picture stay on the whole day or not? So in other words, he was asking, is it going to when you write a, when you have a picture, it's like writing a picture is worth a thousand words. So it's he's sending. Uh, it doesn't make any difference if you're writing in Chinese or you're writing in, uh, in Hebrew or you're writing in English or whatever you're writing, different uh, ways of, of, uh, of writing, that um, it's, it's also, right? And you send a picture, it's also considered, so considered writing. So the, he said, if you, it would go off automatically, let's say, even for a short period of time, it's like, Sabsha, any miskayim. And it's only Drabanan. And then he held that it was like a Siva to walk in front of a camera, especially not Machavan. Um, so he said, I said, uh, if it's, uh, yeah, it would stay on. He said, you can't walk in front of it. As a matter of fact, I heard that he asked going to the Kaisal on Shabbos at one period of time because uh, there's cameras there the whole time on the Kaisal. So how can you walk in front of a camera? You're, you're making a picture of yourself. And then they said they fixed it. So it's not a pshat, they didn't have the cameras. Um, but the pshat was they probably fixed it, that it goes off um, every five hours, goes off a few seconds. And then it all go off at the same time, go off at different times. But they didn't want people to know that they go off, because maybe someone will be able to figure the time when it goes off and do something. And uh, so they fixed it. OK. So, um, but uh, therefore, if you have, um, if there's, if, it just goes into the memory, it's, it's, it's going to be mutter. Now, we have um, a wheelchair that we made. Um, we had a wheelchair. So after that, before, before I went through this incredible, someone asked me if they could be Samach on this. I said, no, no, not be Samach. You have to be Samach on the Gdali, so I shouldn't use it. But after this, my son, when it seemed to me that the whole thing was manufactured, I mean, uh, somehow it wasn't really true, especially some was nick of me. I said, it's full Shabbos. So after that, I said, no, you could use it. Yeah, I didn't have any problem anymore with cold curry. And then I heard that, um, that the um, Rav Yashav asked the elevators to stop at every floor. And Rav Halpern, who designed it, came to Rav Yashav, and they put a cold curry. And Rav Yashav came to Rav, um, Rav Yashav, Rav Halpern, who designed it. So why did he ask for it? So he says, where did I ask for it? He said that there was a cold curry. He said, if I would have known that there was a Rav who was it, I would never have signed to a cold curry. Because uh, it's, I, it was maybe written the tshuva, they hold it also. But Kol Kare, uh, he doesn't do that. So evidently, he, uh, I think he didn't realize that um, someone's matter it. 
um, with this oven, nor do you know how it works or anything else like that. But it was the Gabba who knew, and that's why the Gabba didn't want me to come talk about ovens. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know for sure. Um, so, um, so motion sensors are, if they put on a light, so I will say one more thing, which is an idea of uh, this um, security systems. Rav, Rav Shlomo Zalman had a different outlook on this whole thing. And uh, so let's say you write the word of your cave of K backwards. So when you hold up to a mirror, it comes out frontwards. So if you hold up to a mirror, are you going to stand there in front of the mirror the rest of your life? Because if you go away, you're going to be Mechik the Shem. So Yashua said, no, you're not Mechik because it's not writing. It's just the image. It's, it, it looks like something, but it's, there's no writings with ink with something. But you can, with light, he says, it's just an image. It's like you're looking in the, a mirror as an image. It's the same thing as without the Shem Hashem. You're standing in front of the mirror, so you're creating an image. So can you have to stand in front of a mirror on Shabbos? Um, and you can't move away or whatever. Uh, no, no one's uh, machmed on that because it's just an image. So on a monitor, it's just an image. And according to them, that these problems wouldn't exist. But if a light goes on, sometimes when you're... So that's already more chama. I saw a handwritten shuva from the Vosna who was Mekel to Dov Shemachavan. And maybe it's not a psychration, maybe the, I don't know if he says this, but some say, because maybe the bulb burnt out, and therefore it won't go on, even though that's not shkiach. It's at least car of the psychration, which is Rabbi Nova Avraham Asas. But the, um, the, uh, that something with some Khan, there is Shansat Chak, and what some of Shansat Zalman says. Okay, um, I want to thank all of you for listening to me. Um, the Bible should help so we should all be Zecha to understand these complex issues that have come up and that are coming up every day. What we were Mata yesterday could be Asa today. What we Asa yesterday could be Mata today. Everything is changing all the time. Zach is up to Rav Asa. Thank you, Rav, for clarifying these Sugis Chamuris.